The following edition of Connecticut Valley Views is made possible by Windsor Federal Savings, with offices in Windsor, Bloomfield, Granby, and East Windsor. Neighbors helping neighbors since 1936. Join me, Susan Regan, host of Connecticut Valley Views, the most widely watched interview program on Connecticut Public Access TV. Proof to the people is the byline, insight without bias, generating a 360 perspective. Our mission is to focus on topical subjects with thought-provoking interviews regarding municipal leadership, current affairs, educational and political topics, as well as key destination points in New England. And here is your host, Susan Regan. Thank you for joining me today. My guest on our show is Christopher Dadles. He is the president and CEO of St. Francis Hospital and Medical Center. What a pleasure to be here with you. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Um, Christopher, you joined St. Francis uh, and Medical Center in October 2004 as president and yes. uh, chief executive officer. And you previously served as president and chief executive officer of Mercy Medical Center. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, this October 1st will be my 10th anniversary here, mm -hmm. so I, I'll be here a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I did a little detour to Ohio for, for a few years, mm -hmm. but I've, had, I've been uh, leading complex healthcare organizations now for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I spent 10 years prior to Ohio in New Jersey uh, as a CEO of a hospital, and we formed the largest healthcare system in uh, New Jersey with 23,000 employees, and I became executive vice president of that, and w and I was in New Jersey for 10 years. And prior to that, I was executive vice president of Sinai in Baltimore. So I did my first kind of 10 years in healthcare in, in Baltimore. Your internship, as it were. I, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, where, where I got broken in. What what got you into the medical uh, arena? I guess I might say industry. Well, well, it's always interesting. When I was younger, my grandmother always wanted to be, be a doctor, oh, and I really wasn't go. quite there. You know, she was always saying, "Well, you, you know, you grow up to be a doctor." Right. Uh, but I did take pre-med undergraduate school, but. Then I was thinking of going into uh, accelerated PhD program in pharmacology, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, no, I'm, I couldn't be a scientist. I'm not. Yeah, yes, work. Yeah. Uh, That's not uh, yeah, you know my, my skill forte. set <laughs> in my forte. So somehow I stumbled on the idea of, of healthcare administration in, yes. in the late '70s, and I I just got married, and my wife said, "You better get serious now, <laughs> figure out what you want to do." And so we moved to Virginia. I went to the Medical College of Virginia and received a master's in in healthcare administration from the Medical College of Virginia mm -hmm. and then started my career uh, in, in healthcare mm -hmm. back in, uh, you know, sometime around 1980. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. Every day I wake up, I say, you know, I'm excited about yeah. coming in. I've never regretted it. It's, it's really, a really, really wonderful. So what, what, was the, what was it that brought you to St. Francis? Was it the challenge, the opportunity? The, uh, well, all, all of the all of the above, and mm -hmm. I think St. Francis was a very very unique organization. Um, I went to the to the Midwest, and it's it's different. East Coast and Midwesterners are a little different, and it was kind of a little. I was wound too tight, always mm -hmm. aggressive mm -hmm. about wanting mm -hmm. to do, and they were happy to kind of be you know, uh, mellow. Yeah, yeah. So um, so then I looked for a new opportunity to come back to the East Coast because I've lived in the Northeast yes. all my life. Yeah. So um, I was recruited. To, to St. Francis, uh, they were looking for a new uh, uh, chief executive officer. And what I found about St. Francis was well, a couple of things. I'm, I'm very mission oriented, mm -hmm. and it's a very mission driven organization, uh, really focusing on the community and the people that it serves. But secondly, they had an incredible clinical enterprise here with really outstanding physicians and outstanding caregivers. And then thirdly, they had a very sophisticated and strong board of directors. Uh -huh. And that board was, mm -hmm. was a, an astute board that understood that changes had to be made, that we needed to recruit good people, that we had to build this enterprise for the, for the future. And they allowed me the resources and the ability uh, to do what, what I thought needed to be done here. Uh, aligning our, our physicians in a certain direction, creating the new strategy for the organization. So I would say that I was really... Um, it's, it's the responsibility yeah. with the authority to do yeah, it. Absolutely, absolutely. And so th this was unique here because mm -hmm. this is the finest board of directors I've ever served under. Mm -hmm. And and I, I really felt very, very fortunate. Well, obviously you were all on the same page. Yeah, yeah, we need to get something yeah. done. We need a person who knows how to get it done yeah. and we're going to let you do it. Yeah, it was and I a, think that, a, a that's very, very interesting. Yes. My first interview, I brought an article to the search committee and it was uh, by... Uh, 
Dr. Porter from, from Harvard, mm -hmm. from Harvard mm -hmm. Business School. And it was one of the early articles on where healthcare is going and mm -hmm. the changes and mm -hmm. this, the beginning of the healthcare reform that mm -hmm. came from Obamacare. And it was interesting. So my, at the interview, I dis yes. distributed it to everyone. I said, this article is the best article I've read in ages. And I just brought it to yeah. you so you could. Yeah. And it was interesting. We started to have a dialogue around that from day one. And, and they were really um, astute and understood what we were trying to do, uh, you know, what I was thinking about accomplishing. So it's it, it, it's it just, always it good, good if marriage. you feel as though the people, yeah, yeah, the people are really listening to what you're saying yeah. because they can't give you good answers back if they're mm -hmm. not listening to what that's, you're that's offering that's them. That's true. That's you know? true. And, they, and they're really very, very supportive and, yeah. and really outstanding. And, and, and obviously all the way around at the mm -hmm. net net at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the patient in your care yeah. gets the benefit of all of that. And every associate, it's a trickle-down effect, every really. associate here is so committed. Mm -hmm. this is, it's palpable. But you built a culture. Well, that's, that's important. The culture mm -hmm. here, it, they had a strong start and we mm -hmm. kept building that culture uh, over the years. but. Everyone here is so committed. I think it's, it's, it's really palpable when someone walks into St. Francis, there's something different about, about mm -hmm. the place, and the culture here is wonderful, and I feel extremely privileged to be the chief executive of this organization. Extremely well, it's privileged. often referred to as family. Yeah. You're part of yeah. the St. Francis yeah. family. Any, yeah. Anyone who contributes anything, yeah. whether it's buying a ticket to Miracles yeah. or contributing wine to yeah. the yeah. auction, yeah or even being a patient. Everyone is really part of the family. And thank you, by the way. I understand you contributed wine to our auction. I have, so actually, <laughs> yes. My company has on a personal basis, yeah. and I'm delighted to do oh, so. Thank you. Delighted to do so. Um, <clears throat> now, we want to talk a little bit about the history. Um, mm -hmm. It is a 617-bed acute care hospital. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has actually established, was established in 1897. Yes, uh -huh by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Chambry with 65 bassinets. I think it's kind of sweet, the little children are in it. Mm -hmm. And it is the largest Catholic hospital in New England. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been affiliated with Mount Sinai mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. quite a while. Mm -hmm. And there has been this growing MS Center, which yes. I'd like you to kind of yeah. tell us a little bit yeah. about. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to, but uh, just one comment on the yes. history. When the Sisters ca came originally, they had $4 in their pocket. Oh and my. they started this one one room hospital down the street here yes. uh, at the request of the bishop at the time. And can you imagine those four dollars and what that's grown to in what we have here is a really sophisticated complex. It's, it's absolutely amazing. It's in a, well, that's mm -hmm. turning water into wine. That, that <laughs> is. And, and the MS Center, uh, uh, thank you for asking, mm. is really an incredible model. Uh, you know, some time ago now, over 25 years ago, Mount Sinai and St. Francis, mm -hmm. you know, they merged the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And we have a very, uh, very fine facility on Blue Hills Avenue that does a lot. We have a 60 bed, uh, uh, the only acute rehabilitation hospital in the state with 60 beds. And the reason I say that is because it's part of the, the MS model mm -hmm. that we've created probably one of the most unique uh, models to treat multiple sclerosis in, in, well, in the state definitely, but mm -hmm. in the country too, because we're becoming a role model where people are coming to see what we're doing. And it's based on a real multidisciplinary approach to MS, because what we've done, we've taken all the, all the pieces of MS that were very fragmented, where, where you have your neurology, you have your urology, you have your dietitians, you have your uh, social workers you have and we've tied all that together but most importantly we're taking a rehabilitation approach to MS where we found great results in our research around taking the patient with MS and 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 giving them the opportunity to do things mm -hmm. that will make them better if they're treated through rehabilitation for example we have a robot that's called a locomat, where mm -hmm. it's a robotic treadmill where a MS patient's legs are strapped into a robot's kind of legs and right. moved for them. And so that they go in maybe once a week and they go through this process and it strengthens and retrains the neural uh -huh. pathways mm -hmm. in their legs so that it's they're a able learning to, curve it's for a learning the body. curve for the body. Right. And we have those types of programs that are, that are kind of wrapped around uh, a multidisciplinary approach to the patient that are being, is being very could successful. You, could you call the cure? Could you go that far? Well, no. I mean, do I, you I ever cure it, no, or it's, do you it's, it's maintain really and cure, improve? But let me tell you another story mm -hmm. because something innovative that we're that we're doing. Uh, there's a there's a drug that was developed in um, in Israel by a by a physician in Israel 
that is being administered at the MS Center to patients that, is, that if you're not allergic to the drug, because some mm -hmm. people are allergic, sure. it has dramatic, dramatic results. So we've had patients that were actually quadriplegic from MS My. that weren't even moving. And they take this medication <coughs> along with the rehabilitation mm -hmm. program, and they've gone from, from quadriplegia to, to wheelchairs to walkers to be able to use all their limbs. Oh my, and that's a, that's a it's miracle absolutely, drug. It is a miracle drug, it's called Tisabre. And it was invented by this physician in Israel and he came to visit us last mm -hmm. year. And he doesn't have patient contact, he's a researcher. Okay. And we had patients that have uh, been the, successfully mm -hmm. receiving this, those patients that were quadriplegics that are now active, mm -hmm. and to thank him and to have the dialogue, and he was absolutely overwhelmed. It was one of the most moving experiences <coughs> I, that I've I ever seen. I would imagine because he's seeing the end result of all of his work. Yes. yes <coughs> now he must be doing these things, on um, you know, obviously tests in in yeah. the, whatever tests he has, right. but to see the actual end result to culminate yeah. in something that changes, Tra radically transforming changes Transforming the life. research yes. into reality. Yes. And what he's done is absolutely overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. Well, congratulations on that center and mm -hmm. congratulations and, on hospital. And I, I also want to add that we would have never hat. been able to do this without the support of a husband and wife who are extremely dear to St. Francis and they're Joyce and Andy Mandel, who, if you know Andy, he suffers mm -hmm. from MS mm -hmm. and, and they underwrote the creation of this with with uh, multiple million dollar mm. pledge, and uh, and were are so engaged with so much energy to drive this in the right mm -hmm. direction that they're they're very inspirational, and if they weren't there, we would have I don't think we would have been well, anywhere near if this. If you if you had to look on the silver lining part, yeah. his affliction was mm -hmm. really the catalyst yes. and the driving force for him to be the yeah, savior yes. to the, to the uh, thing. Absolutely. W w absolutely. Without that personal knowledge, you don't have that same passion to right. solve it. And a tremendous passion around this, so. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Now, um, the, the Mandel Center, are many things that you folks mm -hmm. have accomplished, but um, I, I noted, I won't quite call mm -hmm. it your mission statement, but yeah. St. Francis, best care for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's really your strategy, right. really. Yes. And it leads us to talk about um, really What's so key to you is the quality and patient safety. Mm -hmm. And you've received a number of healthcare high grades. Yes. Tell us a little bit well, about that. Well, well, you've received them from various people well, for all kinds for of things. Well, thank you for asking, I'm very proud of our organization yeah. being able to accomplish this. Uh, some of the most important things of really this transformation of healthcare in the new era are making sure that you have absolutely the highest quality and patient safety and, and, the, and, the, and being the most efficient with the mm -hmm. resources. We've done a lot to tackle the quality and patient safety side of things here at St. Francis with some very, very uh, good leadership in that arena. And we've been fortunate to garner a number of very prestigious awards. Mm -hmm. One of those, for example, is the LeapFrog Award, where the LeapFrog uh, organization was constructed by Fortune 100 companies, and they wanted to make sure that their employees were going to the highest quality, safest organizations in the country. And they rate hospitals, A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. E, and F. And uh, we uh, have been, for the last uh, five uh, years or cycles mm -hmm. with them, because I'm not sure it's always on a yearly mm -hmm. basis, uh, rated an A hospital, the only one in Connecticut that has been rated consistently an A hospital. Uh, and we're and that very constant, right. it, that's very important yeah. that it is there on yeah. a regular basis. And most hospitals <coughs> don't get to an A, and if they do, they may drop off mm -hmm. the next time, but we, we're constant. Um, uh, Health Grades has named St. Francis in the top 5% of all uh, uh, safest hospitals in the country, the only hospital in the state of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Consumer Report rated St. Francis the safest hospital for surgery in the state of uh, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So on and on, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we get a number of awards and highlighted for our outstanding quality and patient safety, and we're really proud of that because it's all about the community that we serve. So this is our commitment Certainly. to the people that we are here for, that we are always gonna try uh, to excel in making sure that we're the highest quality with the, with the well that does something record. also for the people that work here too mm -hmm. as well Christopher because there is a morale that mm -hmm. is built and yeah. when you ask the people yeah. to respond to the culture 
Yeah. Um, you don't even need to explain why. Yeah. The outcome of, just like the Mandel Center, the mm -hmm. outcome from the effort put in mm -hmm. becomes visible yes. and becomes a reality in these very, very nice to win awards and so forth, yeah. but their yeah. morale knows that the job they've been doing has all added up right. to something that is recognized. Mm -hmm. And that's important to keep mm -hmm. that effort going mm -hmm. because now they feel, I did that, I yeah. put in my 150%, 100% of the time. And, and one of the key things to that is we're, we're always, you know, we're an organization that tries to think out of the box mm -hmm. and, and, and remain very, very innovative around our approaches to all these things. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly uh, asking ourselves, you know, how Are we can doing we improve? The best? Yeah. Uh, to the point where we, we created a Center for Health Innovation here mm -hmm. that's on our campus that is really looking at how do you re-engineer care, how do you make it better. Mm -hmm. uh, we have created the, um, our primary care institute in collaboration mm -hmm. with the University of Connecticut where we're looking at retraining physicians to be the modern uh, uh, primary care physician of the future. Uh, we're trying to make their practices more efficient. We're trying to change curriculum on what's necessary to be a primary care physician of the future. This past week we had a um, uh, a display, uh, the primary care office of the future, mm -hmm. and we put all of that together for primary care physicians to come and see w what should they expect and how should their offices function uh, in, into the future. Excellent. So all of that, mm -hmm. what it does do, then it comes out in that quality value statement because yes. we're improving, constantly improving how we do business and the models of care that we're developing. Well, it's a lot of plates to spin, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 what it says is is that as they hired you to take over your position mm -hmm. because they knew that you had the objectives and the mm -hmm. strategy to take them where mm -hmm. the board wanted to go, um, you in turn have obviously brought together a team that can efficiently and effectively work mm -hmm. independently to accomplish oh, these sure. goals. So they, they have, although you have, have a lot going, <laughs> you, you, you have delegated to people that you feel uh, that well, you can well, trust. Well, we have to. Uh, yes. You know, healthcare is such a complex environment, no one person has answers. I, you know, it's interesting, 10 years ago when I came here, my mm -hmm. job is completely different. I'm sure it is, it, it always it does evolve. 10, yes. 10 years ago, because we're focused on the hospital mm -hmm. and, and making sure we had a, a very well run efficient hospital here. Now it's running a healthcare enterprise and the hospital is not the center of the universe and how it was before. We were dictating to the public what we should be doing in the past. Now we're asking mm. the community and the and the persons that we to be the center of the universe and tell us yes. what we need and how can we take care of them from from uh, wellness all the way to end of life mm -hmm. and we're changing our, our enterprise not to be a hospital but to be a healthcare enterprise that takes care of the health and mm -hmm. well-being all the way best care for a lifetime for their entire life mm -hmm. and that's what we're we're evolving to so which, which, which really says preventative care are doing what needs to be done now so that we won't have to be getting more involved right. in something more right. complicated and exactly. costly later exactly. on down the line exactly now you um, have Epicare uh, mm -hmm. It started April 1st. Yes. Uh, it's an update for your information technology, Gengris Center. Um, this was a major thing, and I, mm -hmm. I think in part of this, as, as I ask you to just tell us a little bit about this, is the information I think people need to know that although this has become very comprehensive mm -hmm. and uh, certainly has made it more efficient in passing along mm -hmm. the information about all patients, is that there is still confidentiality. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Epicare is the installation of our EPIC uh, electronic medical record for our organization. Mm -hmm. And it's a $120 million project. It's very, very expensive, but, but very needed because, uh, you know, there are mandates mm -hmm. to, to from whether it's from internal or from the federal government mm -hmm. to really be a state-of-the-art uh, information technology for organizations. And um, we had 30 desperate systems here that were doing all different <laughs> things. So it was lab, or yeah. it was this, and yeah. we, they all came together and we replaced that by one system that is coordinated, that is really state of the art, that really manages all information around uh, the patient and, and the patient's history mm -hmm. and, and whatever mm -hmm. needed. And it integrates it with our physicians we have a thousand physicians in our physician hospital organization that by the end of this year we will have every single physician off of paper and on an electronic medical record. Okay. The only organization in the entire state that has that capability. Mm. And what it does is it enhances communication back and forth with the physicians, it improves productivity, 
and, and it improves outcomes for the patient. And to your point about um, you know, confidentiality, mm -hmm. that's something that people are really focused on and obviously no that's one good. wants that's to. That's good, that's important to the public. And it's very, very yeah. important. So we take it very seriously and we do everything in our power to put in every uh, safety valve that can be and we really hold ourselves accountable to that. So you have that aspect of the security piece, but you also have the opportunity for this information system to be a wonderful asset to you as a, as a patient or, or, a, or someone in the community, mm -hmm. because you will have direct access to every single bit of your own information well, that's about very important. your care. And I think that's important to family members who are perhaps responsible for an elderly a person or a person who needs assistance. So you'll be able to be at home on your computer and pull up your chart, your doctor's notes, You'll be able to then ha be able to converse with your doctors and, and, and be a, a partner. The beauty of it is you can be a partner in mm -hmm. care, in your own care, not just a yes. bystander and let yes. everyone else dictate. You're yes. actually helping forge your care as you go forward. And I think that's important. Um, knowledge is very important. Mm -hmm. People feel, particularly when it comes mm -hmm. to themselves, they need to know mm -hmm. what's really going on. Well, now another great fantastic, wonderful accomplishment, which I understand was very close to half of the fundraising was mm -hmm. done for it, um, was mm -hmm. really um, uh, entirely f fundraising, and it is the new women's complex. Oh, yes, yes. And, and you're very proud of that. Well, uh, our new comprehensive women's center. You know, uh, I think that um, everyone would agree that part of the issue of, of changing healthcare is that there's so many pieces that are fragmented, mm -hmm. and there are pieces here, pieces mm -hmm. there, you know, women had to run around and, and go over here for their mammography, mm -hmm. over here for, for their cardiac care, over here for if mm -hmm. they had some urology mm -hmm. issues or whatever. Right. So what we designed was a way for women to come to a center where their care can be managed no matter what it is and be referred to the appropriate settings. So in our new center, which is really a fabulous, fabulous uh, redo of our old emergency room when we mm -hmm. moved the emergency room to the new patient tower, uh, we created a, a state-of-the-art uh, place where we have our comprehensive breast center, mm -hmm. where we have uh, um, nurse navigators that, mm -hmm. there that are talking with the patient to, to make sure that they get to the, to the right locations, whether it's for for urology, whether mm -hmm. it's for women's heart or mm -hmm. whatever, and those facilities in that location do some of it, some of that care, mm -hmm. but it's where you go to be able to be a reference to the rest of the women's care and in a very, very organized fashion and be referred to the right doctors, to the right settings, and so we're very excited about it. And I think what's important too, I, d mm -hmm. I did actually ask the question earlier on mm -hmm. and uh, the response I got was, that yes, you can. Sh you can keep your own primary care physician oh, yes, involved absolutely. in it, oh, so absolutely. that you don't feel as though you've yeah. been removed to s strange doctors. Yeah. Which for women sometimes is very personal. When they're but going to have children, they want mm -hmm. the doctor they've been <laughs> with, the gynecologist that's uh, been there's a there's a healing them. garden. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different things there that are just kind of unique, mm -hmm. and it's just a very beautiful setting, but mm -hmm. also a very you know really really uh, the cutting edge. But you were, you were saying about the philanthropy piece, which is yes, really, yeah. which is heartwarming to yes. me, that, that we did fundraising that, was, that became women for women, mm -hmm. in a sense that wh what was created were giving circles where we had captains or champions that would recruit. Uh, each giving circle was valued at $100,000, mm -hmm. and each captain tried to recruit nine ah. others, including the captain, to, to do a pledge of $10,000, mm -hmm. so every giving circle was a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar giving circle. You could have more if you wanted to double right, that. You right. could double that, sure. but that was the minimum size sure. was a hundred thousand dollars. And when we raised uh, uh, for that project close to four million dollars mm -hmm. towards that project mm -hmm. from just just the uh, um, many many women coming forward and and contributing for their model, for yeah. their women for women, you know, yeah. to, to take well, care they, of the women Well, they, they certainly had, uh, obviously, an obvious mm -hmm. reason for doing it, but it, yeah. was a, it was a feminism movement that was very <laughs> constructive. Well, well, it was. It was, you know, it was very effective, too. Yes, they yes. Were, they, it, it really worked. Well, <laughs> it, really worked. well it, it depends. You know, you put up, you put up the yeah. uh, goal, and it depends yeah. on how fast they're going to get but there. But it's all service-oriented. We have valet parking. Uh, women oh, can right. just come right up to the front valet their yeah, car. Yeah, so it's very come kind in. of private. It's and very, very private. You're right. not marching through the hospital. Right, right. Uh, you're going to one location. Sure. We manage your care. 
And, it's very compassionate. And, and it's a really, really wonderful approach. Um, well, now, if there are a couple of other things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could talk to you for quite a while because we've got <laughs> so much fun. stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. Now, uh, there, uh, one, you've, you've written several articles, and mm -hmm. I think one of the key ones um, is to uh, do your health a favor, and you provide navigation assistance to people in this new ACA thing that we have going yeah. on that's very confusing. Yeah. Um, it, what policy you will have, what your policy mm -hmm. will cover, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think that's key. Um, you also have talked about this too shall pass, which is all of the glitches that we've run into, mm -hmm. but Kevin Cunahan has done Excess mm -hmm. Health Connecticut yeah. and executed, I think, yes. almost almost perfectly considered, yeah. considering all the challenges. But one of the things I would like to talk about, though, there are other things that this hospital does mm -hmm. beyond what you see, which are mm -hmm. obvious, which is in 2013, it was over $89 million provided to the community through charity care mm -hmm. and uh, clinical and outreach programs. And I, I think that's important to mention. Uh, well, well, it is very, very important because uh, you know it's, it's not obvious to the mm -hmm. public that we have many programs that extend out into the community mm -hmm. that really aren't funded, mm. whether they're clinics, whether they're the support of the Malta House of Care or clinics that are underfunded, uh, whether it's our Center for Health Equity mm -hmm. that is going in and taking care of like the Curtis Robinson Mass yes. Health Institute yes. for prostate cancer in African-American men mm -hmm. and providing care and research around that. We have a relationship with, believe it or not, Tuskegee University in Alabama yeah, really. uh, around doing research for uh, prostate mm -hmm. cancer in African-American mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. And all these things are unfunded. And, uh, and our charity care that we and provide Not acknowledged here. until we and, talk and about it here. Really not. I mean, uh. we can go out there and try to, mm. try to uh, tell the public, but it's not easy. Mm. And, and last year was 89 million. This year is like 110 million. Mm -hmm. It it's, keeps on growing because the needs are f for the community are, are so extensive that. Um, and this economy drives and, and those yes, needs. Yes, absolutely. So, so we're out there with all kinds of programming mm -hmm. that are extended to the community that, that we take on as our basically our contribution to the community and its needs. Mm -hmm. And we try to. Uh, with that be as effective as possible and, and take care of as many people and as many needs as, as possible. And that it does include charity care. It also includes, that number also includes the underfunding uh, from the Medicaid program because we mm -hmm. only get paid 51 cents on the dollar uh, to cover Medicaid mm -hmm. and we make all of that up. Yeah. Uh, so so mm. that's uh, a really, really um uh, well, this Important this piece. this piece right oh, yes. here. Um, so th we're talking about that. We're yes. talking about mm -hmm. Community Benefit Report 2013 yes. and and all of the things that you've accomplished. Because you also gave 20 million mm -hmm. in the value. I mean, when we yeah. talk 20 million, people think about okay dollars. Yeah. But what you're really giving is you're really giving more, quote unquote, in kind. Yeah. That could even possibly cost more than that. But you're yeah. giving that time, right. that effort. The yeah, it's work. not a check that no, we write. No, it's not it's, a check. It's, it's the people, the time, the effort, and the resources yes. to take care of the public in certain aspects that that there's a gap. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to fill those gaps and really be effective uh, in meeting the needs of our community. So we do community assessments first, mm -hmm. and we see, well, where, what are, what are the issues? Well, it's, you know, it's things like uh, prostate cancer in mm -hmm. African American men. It's, it's obesity. It's, um, you know, it's, it's cardiac uh, mm -hmm. uh, problems in women in underserved yes. communities. So these are the things that we go. So we set up educational programs that we pay for. Uh, we set up physicians that go out into the communities. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we lecture in churches and synagogues uh, about the need to, to do. So these are all resources that wouldn't be there if we weren't there. So, so St. Francis really, the mission has not been accomplished, but the mission has been identified, and I think that's mm -hmm. what you do in your yes, daily work. Yes. Well, it, it's been a pleasure, Christopher, oh, I have to tell you, to, uh, to, to talk about all the good things, and we're very proud of it. I'd like to give mm -hmm. the website for the hospital, and it is www.stfrancescare.com. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you, Christopher, oh, thank for you your so time. Much for all right. Me. And you can see us on Facebook, and you can see all of our programs on our website at www.ctvalleyviews.com. This is Susan Regan. Thank you for joining me and bringing proof to the people.
Our thanks to Windsor Federal Savings for making this program possible. Neighbors helping neighbors since 1936.